What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be fixing one of the most common problems I have ever seen on a 7.3 liter power stroke. This is something that I am constantly seeing on all the different forums and pages I'm on as people asking, why is there diesel in my valley? Why is there diesel leaking under my truck? And that is almost always because of this thing right there. That is the fuel bowl in the truck, the fuel filter housing in the truck, um, and it has a lot of different O-rings and seals that tend to leak over time. This is a video I told you guys I'd do, I think it was last week, um, but basically showing you guys how to completely go through and rebuild and reseal the entire uh, reseal the entire fuel bowl so it's basically new and you don't have to worry about it for another however many years it lasted the first time. So as you can see, the fuel bowl is already out of my truck. That is because I have a completely uh, custom fuel system in my truck itself from CNC Fabrication. I guess it's not really custom if it's a production kit that they make, but it's an aftermarket fuel system that gets rid of the fuel bowl entirely. So I just had this thing sitting on the shelf and I figured I'd make a video uh, for you guys to help you out. Uh, for the most part, most people do not need to get rid of their fuel bowl in the truck. Um, I didn't need to get rid of the fuel bowl in my truck for the power levels I'm pushing, um, but I got rid of it specifically because I was tired of it leaking and I wanted a little more space in the valley of my engine to work on things. Um, but that being said, um, by no means is it a huge restriction in the system. Um, these fuel bowls can support well up above 400 horsepower. I've seen some people say five and 600. You can push through these fuel bowls, so it's not like it's the end of the world to keep it. Um, you just gotta go through the work to rebuild it and deal with it leaking every now and then, which hopefully, when you rebuild it entirely, it should not It should last for quite a while longer. Um, so that's what I'm going to be going over today, hopefully help out a number of you guys out there. There's a few other videos out there as well, but I figured I'd give my input and uh, Hopefully it helps some of you guys out. So since the fuel bowl is already out of my truck, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to take it out. It's pretty simple, um, but we'll just jump straight into that. And I think I'm going to go through the process, kind of film all of it and do a little bit of a voiceover so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I can explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it instead of constantly pausing, going back and talking to the camera and then going back to work. Um, we'll see how that works. Um, but I think that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, so let's get to work. Um, and I'll show you guys how to take this out and start to work on it. All right, so here you guys go, looking at the fuel bowl. This is how it would be sitting inside the engine bay um, if you're looking at it from the front of the engine. Over on the right side, you will see different fuel line connecting. This is the return line. Down below it, you have the fuel feed line. And then on the other side, you're going to see two other fuel lines that you'll have to disconnect. Both of those are going to different lines to the passenger and driver's side head. Now on the front of the fuel bowl, it's secured through the high pressure oil pump reservoir with two bolts. Um, you'll have to take those out through the front of the reservoir towards the radiator or the fan on the engine. Um, Pretty simple, they just go through there. Some people have to move their exhaust back pressure sensor out of the way to get that left bolt out, um, but it's not too bad of a job to do. All right, so here we have the fuel bowl sitting in front of me right now with how it would be looking when it was sitting in the engine. If you look on the back side of the fuel bowl, there will be this yellow valve. What you have to do is open it up to the middle, and this is how you drain the fuel out of the fuel bowl, so you make a little bit less of a mess. Uh, the fuel bowl drain drains down, has a little metal tube that comes out right in front of the passenger side uh, exhaust header. Um, you can either put a bottle up to it or put a little line on it and drain the fuel out to make it a little bit cleaner. Now on the right side, there are going to be these two different lines, fuel lines that you have to disconnect. Um, simply unscrew the nut and pull the line away. And same thing on the left side, there will be two other lines to disconnect. So once you have the bowl drained and all the lines disconnected, the last thing to do is to remove these two bolts. They go through your high pressure oil reservoir and are pretty straightforward to pull out. The left one will probably have to uh, remove the exhaust back pressure sensor to get it all the way out. Some people do, some people don't. But once you have those two bolts out, the fuel bolt will just come straight up and out of the valley of the engine and it's ready to work on. 
All right, so I want to give you guys a quick look at all the supplies I'll be using for the most part or what I'm going to be replacing. Um, from dieselorings.com, you can get a whole kit to completely rebuild the fuel bowl. comes with all these different O-rings that you can see here and a nice little size chart so you can kind of lay out and get a good idea of what O-ring is for which. I thought that was pretty handy. Um, I ordered it through Riff Raff Diesel, a very, very good company to work with if you own a 7.3. And it looks like Diesel or Riff Raff sends the Diesel O-Rings kit, so they're just a distributor of it. So along with the whole O-Ring kit, I decided to get a brand new fuel bowl heater as well. This was also ordered through Riff Raff. And one thing I like about Riff Raff is they use a lot of OEM parts. So a nice international branded OEM uh, fuel bowl heater to go in the new fuel bowl. Alright, so now we're getting into the whole disassembly of everything once you have it out of the truck. Right here, it can be pretty stubborn to get these fuel bowls off. They can get a uh, little stuck on there. So here's my special tool to help get it off. Uh, basically, the biggest wrench you can find from the hardware store usually does the trick. Just get it enough to uh, break it free. You can spin it off by hand. Um, there's a lot of different ways. Some of them come with a plastic nut on top to take off, but these OEM ones do not. Um, so instead of trying to use a screwdriver and beating it off, a big old wrench comes in handy. Then of course, inside your fuel bowl, you have your fuel filter itself, which just kind of is stuck in place by the O-ring seals it has on it. Um, nice, simple Motocraft filter right there. Um, you can see how it sits inside the lid, pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll move that out of the way and then on top of the lid if you guys are changing your fuel filter be aware of the o-ring that can sometimes get stuck up on the lid itself like mine did right here um, it is a directional o-ring um, usually the kits come with directions on which way to point it um, but just be aware that the o-ring is there so also i don't know if this is for all the different filters but on the bottom of the motocraft uh, filter there is a rubber seal that got stuck on the bottom. Another thing to be aware of, um, here you can see that it just kind of sits in the bottom of the filter. Uh, mine got stuck on the plunger or whatever you want to call it inside the fuel bowl. Um, be aware that it could get stuck inside of there. So now we're going to move on to removing the fuel pressure regulator off the side of the fuel bowl. Pretty simple. It's just a couple of T25 Torx bits. When you're backing this out, make sure you go back and forth. It is spring-loaded, and you don't want to bind up one side. Um, so just keep rotating back and forth between the two bolts, and eventually it'll be all the way out. All right, so as I'm taking this out, I wanted to show you guys the spring that is inside of it. It does line up in a couple of different slots. Um, but it's got the plunger and the spring, and that's what causes it to be spring-loaded and how the fuel pressure regulator works. The higher the pressure, uh, the more it pushes on the spring, and the more fuel it lets past it or past the plunger. So it's all a pretty basic setup. Nothing too complicated about this part. Um, you got the plunger, the spring, the whole assembly right there. And here inside, I'm trying to show you guys, you can see the little bit of the hole in the middle that the spring sits inside of. Now to get the last piece of the fuel pressure regulator out, just use a small socket. I think I used a seven millimeter and there you saw it goes shooting out. Um, that is the last little bit and the last piece that has an O-ring on it that we will be replacing. Um, simple enough, just use the socket to push it out um, and that's the rest of that. All right, so now we're moving on to remove all the internals inside the fuel bowl itself. Um, here you can see you got the fuel bowl heater as well as this plunger assembly in the middle. Uh, for, the for the heater itself, you have two T20 Torx bits that you're going to be removing, and then you simply unplug the heater um, right at that little plug that I'm pointing out right here. Pretty simple process. So I just used a small needle nose plier to pull off the plug. And then just like the fuel pressure regulator, this is also spring loaded. So just keep working your way back and forth between the two bolts um, and it will come right out. So you can see you got the first screw out, good old magnetic screwdriver. 
and then the second screw. And there you have it. That is the fuel bowl heater at the bottom of the fuel bowl. You can see it's probably the original one from the truck. Uh, nice and dirty and worn out. And now we have the plunger assembly in the middle. Um, you can see the spring there that makes it spring loaded. Um, not crazy. I mean, it's a pretty stiff spring, um, but it's not too crazy. And then there are some internals inside of this that you'll be needing to remove. There you can see the one o ring on the outside. And to get to the ones on the inside, you can simply push in on the center cap in the middle there um, and push out all the internals. Um, it's pretty simple. I just used a screwdriver. So you'll see it. there's a small little plunger thing with another o-ring on that along with that metal dowel. And then there's one last little piece inside of it um, that I use the pick tool to push out. Um, it's not really stuck in there. It's just a last little kind of top plunger to the assembly. Right there. So to keep things organized, I'm just going to lightly put it all back together um, just to keep it in order while I'm going through the rest of the process. So I figured I'd show you guys what it looks like with all the internals removed from it and to show you guys the 20 years worth of dirt and grime that has accumulated down there. To be completely honest, it wasn't nearly as bad as I expected, but definitely going to clean it out a bit before putting it all back together. So now we're going to remove the plug, the electrical plug on the back of the fuel bowl that controls your fuel bowl heater and the water sensor at the bottom of the bowl. Again, this is just two T20 Torx bits. Um, this one's not spring loaded. Just take the bolts out um, and then it's held in place by the O-rings. So you just got to pry it up a little and pull it out of its slot. So here you go. Popped right on out and you can see the two O-rings that we'll be replacing in there and the connecting point for the water sensor and the heat uh, heater element or the power point for the heat. Whatever you want to call it, that's what these two pieces are for. All right, so now we get on to removing the fuel bowl drain. Can you guess what size these bolts are? Yeah, some more T20 Torx bit bolts. Um, nothing too crazy about it. Again, it's not spring loaded, so just take out our, all four bolts and the whole assembly will pop off. Don't worry, the handle or the yellow handle will probably fall off. It's not really attached. Um, it's meant to be able to come off. All right, so the first two O-rings you'll see, and one of the main leaking points on the fuel bowl is these two O-rings that are stuck inside these holes right here. And I can tell you these O-rings were pretty old and crusty. Um, they still probably had some life left in them, but they were pretty flattened out, uh, and I'm sure they were in need of being replaced. Inside you can see kind of the drain ball assembly and the yellow sealant that Ford put in from the factory. So now there's actually an O-ring we need to replace inside of here, so we're taking this apart as well. There's a little tiny cap on the end of this that is tricky to remove, uh, but I'll show you the trick that I found out here in a second. So of course I didn't catch it in frame of the camera, but if you take one of those four screws that you took out, you can actually lightly thread it into that plastic piece and pull it right on out. Doesn't have to thread in very far. Don't try to break anything. But there you can see it just barely threaded in the tip. You can pull the screw back out and you got the cap out. Now be very, very careful when you're pulling this part out because there's a little tiny small check valve ball right in underneath it and you don't want to throw that across the room. So you can see that I'm going to be dumping out that little tiny ball and there it is. The camera makes it look bigger than it is uh, but it's a small little thing that I swear if you drop on the floor you're probably not going to find it again. Uh, so there's a little bit of a look at it. Just be careful when you're taking that cap off. Um, I don't know what the ball's for but I imagine it is somewhat important so just be careful with what you're doing. 
So now to remove the rest of the assembly, um, simply put that valve back on and twist it a full 180 degrees until you see the flat surfaces come up to the front. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that in the video. Um, and now I just took my pliers and ended up pulling out the assembly itself. Now don't panic if you pull on it like I do and it comes out in different pieces because it is actually three separate pieces making up the whole assembly. Um, and wiggle it around a little and twist it a little bit because it has to line up just right to come out. So if yours did come apart in different pieces like mine, don't worry. You can simply just push it back into place and it'll pop right back into its place. There you can see the O-ring uh, that we're going to be replacing and we're going to be cleaning up that yellow sealant as well. Um, there's a quick look at how it comes apart. Like I said, three separate pieces and those two kind of like grooved cutouts, they just snap back in together right up on top of each other. Um, so don't panic probably didn't break it. And there it is, right back into place. So now we're going to be removing the two plugs on the back of the fuel bowl itself. Um, I believe they are 3 16 if I remember correctly, which looks right based on what I'm showing. Uh, but they're simple Allen heads, pretty easy to get out. Um, and those have O-rings on them that we will also be replacing along with this whole rebuild. There's a quick look at the O-rings. Now we're going to move on to the next step. Alright, so the next step is to start cleaning everything back up and get it ready for reassembly. So I'm going through right now, cleaning up all that yellow sealant left behind. Uh, Riff Raff recommends using some lacquer thinner. I ended up using some brake cleaner and it worked pretty darn well. Just all the different places that you have that yellow sealant on there, just go through and clean it up. And like I promised, went through and cleaned out the bottom of the fuel bowl best I could. Couldn't get it quite perfect, but it was a million times better than it was before. So it should be in pretty good condition for the next owner of this fuel bowl. Much cleaner than it was. All right, so as I'm editing this video for you guys, looks like we're sitting at about 17 and a half minutes at this point. So I think I'm going to call this a wrap on this video. I know it's a little cruel, just getting ready to start reassembling, but you guys will have to stick around for the next video. I will probably be releasing them at the same time. Um, so it won't be much of a wait for you guys, but a 30 to 40 minute video is probably a little extreme. So with that, Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you're interested in seeing the fuel bolt back together, check out part two of this build or of this rebuild, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you very much.